huda wa dalala ala khair ibtigha'a wa jilla wa maradatihi wa qurbihi wa thawabihi subhanahu wa ta'ala ma'a lutfin wa afiyatin bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin اللهم إن سدك العلم لدني والمشرب السفي الهني يوهب يغني اللهم إن سدك العلم لدني والمشرب السفي الهني يوهب يغني اللهم إن سدك العلم لدني والمشرب السفي الهني يوهب يغني صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله all peace be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has uh, you know who has uh, must say in a moment uh, who has gathered us today again like on a Thursday going through the book of one of the greatest scholars in Islam Imam uh, Muhammad bin Muhammad bin Muhammad bin Ahmad al-Ghazali may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase us in this knowledge may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be of those who apply this knowledge I, uh, for those of you who have gone through this book thus far this book is not an easy book to apply eh? <laughs> it's actually a very uh, mashallah uh, that is a very it's, it's very um, you would say <laughs> it's a high standard eh? the Imam Ghazali Imam Ghazali places a very high standard on us right, for us to take from this book Right, so alhamdulillah, today we have actually finished the sins of the heart. Previously, we went to the sins of the heart, and Imam Ghazali mentioned the four sins. I want to ask you now, what are they? Hasad. Hasad. You looked at it. No, I thought you just flipped. Haste. Hasad is haste. Hasad is envy. Yeah, Hasad is envy. Then long book. Ah, tulul amal. And kibar is arrogance, right? For and then what are their cures? Peace. <laughs> <laughs> no, remember. Remembrance of death, right? Remembrance of death uh, kills kills living long hope. Time management. Yes, time management. He says, and also to learn about the akhirah and everything that you understand. He is better. Hasad. Reba. Right, Rida, having contentment for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all that he has given us that is uh, the, 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 the cure for uh, for envy right to have Rida right, whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a portion that is for you it's not for you that is not for you I right, just don't have that and last one for Kibar Kibar is what? Arrogance eh? yes oh. Arrogance to reflect on the self right to reflect on the self a lot and to see all of the shortcomings of the self and from then on you cannot be possibly arrogant Right, because I mean, if a person really knows himself, he knows how, uh, you know, how pathetic he is really in person, and how much he actually shows to people, and how much he is uh, truly for Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Okay, that's what we have taken uh, thus far. Now we're going into the stomach and protecting the stomach. Right, mashallah. <laughs> then last I remember, I was saying, oh, the next chapter is about the stomach. <laughs> so may Allah it's Subhanahu Wa Taala. Ah. Yeah, no, no, no chapter is we're still, we're still under the third hurdle. We're still in the third hurdle. We've not gone past the third hurdle. And the third hurdle is really said a lot of the, uh, my teacher will say will tell us that the third hurdle, many people will just go round and round and round the third hurdle for a long time until they die. <laughs> like they don't actually get past the third hurdle. <laughs> because and you see it's this long, the third hurdle. We're still we're still halfway through the book and we're still on the third hurdle. Because uh, it's really that's the case. See where does it end, eh? I show you where does it end. The third hurdle ends. The third hurdle ends. Not here, not here, not here. It, it goes further. There's it goes hurdles, further. Right? Yeah. I didn't catch. I didn't start the so. No, there are seven hurdles. Oh, seven hurdles. There are seven hurdles. This is the se- This is the fourth hurdle. Right. So the third hurdle lasted us from all the way. You know, if you look at it. Subhanallah. So the first hurdle is knowledge. Yes. The second hurdle is talbat. Yes. The third hurdle is hindrance. Those that hinder you from from worship, yes. And under the hindrance are four things yeah, that hinder you. Yes. No, uh, no, 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 no. What are the four things that hinder you from uh, from from worship? Dunya, people, shaitan, nafs. And then under nafs. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So this is the entire third hurdle. Again, okay, this is the whole of the third hurdle, right? This is how much I've gone through so far. Eh? So third, we're going to edit page sixty-five. And it ends at page 154. Right. So, <laughs> there's a good 100 pages, almost 100 or 90 pages of the third hurdle. Right. So, we are still on the third hurdle. So, today, Al-Faslul Khamisu Al-Batanu Wahifzuhu. 
ثم عليك وفقك الله بحفظ البطن وإصلاحه فإنه أشق الأعضاء إصلاحا على المجتهد وأكثرها مؤنة مؤنة وشغلا وأعظمها ضررا وأثرا لأنه المنبع والمعدن ومنه تهيج الأمور في الأعضاء من قوة وضعف وعفة وجماح ونحويه So he says here Right, from the fifth section here about the stomach. So he says, now it is on you. May Allah give you a lot of tawfiq and ability. And throughout the book, he does this because he, I, he, he, he confirmed knows that it's not easy. So throughout the book, he keeps making dua for the reader. May Allah give you tawfiq. May Allah give you tawfiq. You know, may you be able to do this. I, what I'm about to advise you, you know, try your best to do this. Right, so he says, it is on you. Right, to guard over your stomach and to rectify it. Right? And because and why? Because it is of the most difficult of body parts to rectify. The stomach. The most difficult of, recti- of body parts uh, to rectify uh, uh, on someone who is striving very hard to rectify the stomach. And it is the one right, that is, uh, has the most issues and, uh, and, 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 and affairs, the stomach. Right? It's very busy, the stomach. Right? And a lot of issues, a lot of affairs in the stomach. And it is the one that can harm the most and have the worst effects on a person, the stomach. And in a while, I will share why I shared that uh, on Sunday. And we had a session on Sunday about, about our food consumption. I'll, I'll just share it out. Like, it's something that I've been learning. Actually, I could take my notes. I have my notes uh, inside of you know uh, one of the one of the scholars of Turkey. Uh, she actually wrote a lot about food and about how it affects a person's worship and a person's iman and a person's acceptance of the truth. And she also wrote extensively about food of our time, how it is all you know. It's not conspiracy or whatever. It's truth. It's actually happening. Uh, how it's all, you know, uh, manipulating or being manipulated and manipulating the consumers, right, so that they reach a point whereby the iman is so weak that when at the end of times when the jal comes, they will easily be convinced and brainwashed by the jal, and by all comes down to their food and to the flesh that is being uh, that is being developed from the nourishment in this food. Right. So I actually have notes. I'm going through the book that that that, that she's that she wrote I'm reading I'm going through uh, this book that she wrote and she writes a lot of things that is uh, very eye-opening like about the reality of food and it's very true it's very very true uh, the moment you try to start cl- cleaning out your diet you will see major changes in your character in your worship in your iman in your faith like you will see Right, you will see you see major changes, right? Just in the changing of the food or the cleaning out of this diet. And we're gonna go into exactly what of our diet we need to clean out. Right? So if you really want to traverse on this path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? So like he says it is the most troublesome, most difficult, and the greatest cause of harm and bad effects. Right? The stomach. Right? It is where all sin comes from. Stomach. Right? So so and that's why there's a hadith which you don't later on, I think he will he will mention. That if you eat, if you eat that what is halal, you will obey Allah whether you choose to or not. And if you eat the haram or the shubaha, you will disobey Allah whether you choose to or not. Right? Which means that you know your your body goes into an automated mode right? because of the flesh that is being uh, that, that is being grown right, from whatever you are putting into your mouth. I mean, it's it 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 very scary like, in a way But actually later on If we have time I'll go and get my notes Or maybe next week I'll get my notes And uh, we can read through That those uh, that, that decision, decision a bit Because I feel It's one of the strongest points Of uh, da'wah To our people Because our laziness With ibadah Or even even people To the point of the aqidah Having doubts You know In, in the religion Having doubt in Allah Having doubt All of it actually Goes back down to the food It actually finds its way To the food 
Just like people of the past, they have no issue in believing in God, in Allah, in the, in the, in the existence of, 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 of a creator, uh, because of the purity of what they consume. Uh, people of our time, there's so much nonsense in the food that they are manipulating that it is affecting how we even believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And people tend to not believe in, even then, really, eh? because it's a, it's a vicious cycle. They eat terrible food, they don't believe. You tell them about the food, they don't believe because of the food. <laughs> and they eat more of that food, and all the more they don't believe what you're going to say to them. Right, and they eat more of that food, and they get even worse and, and deeper and deeper into this. It is, it's a vicious cycle like, and dark, darkness. Right, but people don't understand. <laughs> people, people don't understand that. Uh, Muhammad, people don't understand that the human, the, the, the different aspects of the human being, the four aspects. And we have, a four, we have four aspects. You should have heard this a lot by now in my classes. You have the physical. Emotional, mental, and spiritual aspects. You have four aspects of a human being, and all four of them are intertwined. Right? They each affect the other. And one of the greatest proofs of this is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, fast so that you get taqwa. And just by that one verse, you know, fast, so they get, I mean, I'm, I'm rephrasing, but the verse that says, you know, fast. Right, so that you might, you might attain taqwa That verse in and of itself Is a direct proof Of the direct link Between the physical aspect Of the human being And his spiritual aspect right, the one, No one can say That you know I eat whatever I want to eat And I am pious you know, It will not affect My piety or my worship No one can say that If that was the case Why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Have all these rules about, our, about what we consume It's not a matter Of just physical harm that it's causing us, and we have no idea the extent of the emotional, mental, and, 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 and spiritual harm that non-halal food causes us, or even shubahat food causes us, right? to the extent. We don't, we don't understand. That's why people, when they say, oh, why is it not halal? You know, and they look for physical explanations as to why you know, khinzir, you know, uh, 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 swine is not halal. Or why alcohol is not halal? Or why must slaughter in this way? And why can't it be that way? And why, why, why? No, and they, they try to see the reason. And of course, there are physical reasons. Like you say, oh, must slaughter this way because the blood gets drained out. You know, it becomes clean and pure. Or we say, you know, you must slaughter this way. Or you can't eat the pig because there's no neck. You can't slaughter. Some of them say that. They say that the pig, the, the, the swine uh, stores its, uh, its toxins in its flesh. So it's all physical reasons. And they are true and they are there. Right, but the, the spiritual reasons or the emotional reasons or the mental reasons, as human beings, we have not tapped into it at all. We don't know how exactly eating all these things affects our emotional state. And for all we know, what is the, 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 the tragedy is happening uh, to our people at this time with their emotional crisis, in, in the, especially in the developed world, where they eat the least of natural foods, <laughs> like it could very well be that this entire crisis in the, in, in the emotions is traced back to the food that we eat, that we are eating angsty animals, you know, we're eating depressed animals on, uh, you know, on Prozac or on, you know, whatever, whatever, ah, these are stressed out animals, you're eating their flesh, right, that's what we're eating, and you're being pumped with all these hormones, you don't know what's going on, so, you know, human beings have not studied a lot, uh, at anything at all, in fact. We barely scratch the surface of all of whatever we are doing, but we are messing with things. We are messing with the creation. We are messing with what Allah Subhanahu has put in place, and we think we are doing better. And for all we know, all of these problems, even schizophrenia, even depression, even whatsoever, there is mental problems. It could be the, the source of it could be very well be food. And in the book that I was reading, you know, the, uh, the, the, the author she's actually a, a, a she's actually a trained and a qualified. Practitioner, doctor, I right? mean, a, a real doctor, doctor, right? But she left her service because she realized that, you know, medicine. And, and you all can have your own opinions, lah. Right? But she was, she, she realized that medicine is not, uh, is not helping anyone, right? Whereas well, medicine is not helping anyone because you know you go back to the hadith or so. She entered into Islam. She's not a Muslim. She entered into Islam. In Islam, she found out a lot about nutrition and about health and about the health of the four aspects of human being. So when you look at health, you don't speak about just your physical health, you look about your emotional health, you look about your mental health, you look about your spiritual health, and how close you are to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is your spiritual health. So when she entered into Islam, she saw the entire world of the discussion of health. 
uh, and we look into the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and then she realized that you know, subhanallah, like for example, the hadith that uh, the stomach is the house of all diseases. I don't take that hadith lightly. It is very much the stomach. It is very much the house of all diseases. Every disease ever can find its root in the stomach. Every disease. And why do we believe that? This is the hadith of Rasulullah Islam. Without doubt, it is true. Without doubt. Right? So, so, and and, and she, when she went into it physically, right, she found how really food is creating all these diseases in the human being. Right? And especially now that we, that we are manipulating food, that our body naturally cannot identify these molecules that are being manipulated. And when you, manipulate, you, when you try to change the gene, genealogy of food, you do you know, genetic modif- modification and whatsoever, it, it creates a, a, a food whereby the body is unable to recognize and the body is unable to recognize the, uh, the body is unable to digest or assimilate the food. So you know, food comes to your body, it gets digested, then it gets assimilated, then it gets absorbed and assimilated into the system. When, bo- when the body identifies food that is unable to digest on the first level and that is digestion, right, it throws it out. Right, and that comes out as, uh, as feces. Right? If the body is able to digest it, but it's still foreign and it ends into the bloodstream, then the body is unable to assimilate it. So the body doesn't know what to do with it. Right? So what happens is that this, 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 these things will sit in the body and then it will turn into toxins. And from there, a few things can happen to a human being. Right? So from there, these toxins, the body will try to avoid placing these toxins at uh, organs. Right? But it will put it at skin. Right? So some people it begin to manifest as uh, skin disease. It will throw out stuff. Some people, the body will not do that, but the body will build fat. Right? And then they'll put the toxins in the fat. Because that's the safest place where you can put toxins. So it will not affect the, it will not affect the, the body. Right? There's some people can tend to grow uh, 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 severely overweight in our time. It's never happened in the history of human beings for people to grow severely overweight. Right? It's something very highly unnatural. And I know someone that uh, this person was taking this particular food that was said to be, you know, a booster, right? but it was making, or she was giving it to her child, lah. but it was making her child very overweight. Not just overweight, but very, very, very big and overweight. So when my mother saw it, my mother was like, take him off of that. Take him off of that. It basically, it was, it, was, uh, it was formula milk. It was a type of formula milk. Type. Take him off of that. Right? So she stopped it, and straight away his body began to, it began to become normal. Right? Normal human size. Body. Prior to that, he was really like having layers, and he's only a few years old. And by having layers on his body, right? So, so, but, but that shows what toxins can do. So it's not so much. They wondering how come he can he can break down the the fat. It's not about the fat. It's about toxins that he's taking in, that the body is begin, beginning to build up. Right? And some people, their bodies are not able to carry fat. It's the way that the genetic the, the, the genes are. So what happens? The the toxins go into the organs. So if not being thrown out by the skin long, uh, quick enough or by the kidney is quick enough, it goes to the organs. And from there, you have liver failure, you have kidney failure, you even have uh, uh, cancer cells forming up because the body is unable to keep fat. Right? So that the toxins enter into all of these this, this cells. Which is why all of it goes back to the food. It really goes all the way back to the food. Right? And a lot of it is that in our time, it's really all around us that it's so hard to even avoid it because to the point that fruits and vegetables are also genetically modified. So even you try to keep the fruits and vegetables, right? One thing, there's all these uh, pesticides on them, you know, and then you have all these, you know, chemicals, everything, and it's all being consumed into the body. So if you try to keep it clean, you can't keep it clean. Right? So the worst what you can do, you try to grow your own stuff, or you try to go organic, you try to go, you know, all these things, and it's, it's costly. You know, and Shihamda says, you know, so what if it's costly? Buy less, eat less. <laughs> Right. So instead of, of eating so much, eat so much less because it's so costly. Right? And then some of the ulama say that you know to the point you know what just fast, right? Just fast and eat dates. <laughs> right? To the point that if you really want to see, but basically this book that I was going through, I mean I'm going to go through the chapter soon. Right? But what is but because of this this point whereby Imam Ghazali says that is where all the harm comes from. That is where all the the diseases, physical, spiritual, emotional, and mental diseases come from. It is from the food. Right, food creates bad character in a person. Right, so that's why when you see in our kids nowadays, you know, I mean the children nowadays, when they have, you know, they, they, they're angsty, right? They are impatient, right? They are uh, uh, fiery, right? They are whatever they are. 
it can come it could possibly come down to the food that they are being that they are being fed or the sugar or all this you know processed food that's being fed into them that's causing them to be to act up in that way and so you're like oh, what are we gonna do because <laughs> it's, it's all around us you do it with yakin yes but at the same time you know there is still the the door the door it, it I mean, the thing about it is that our yakin, right? <laughs> if our yakin 100%, 100% removed. <laughs> like Sayyidina Khalid bin Walid, whereby he said, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, and he drank, he drank the poison knowing that it is poison. It did not affect him at all. 100% yakin in the, the, the basmala. But that is the basmala of Khalid bin Walid. Right? It's not our Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So that's why it, it still has the effect on us. Because, you know, if we have, you know, caught, and Imam Ali was told in this book, he was mentioned, if you have the full yaqeen, you want to be doing a lot of things that you are doing right now. <laughs> he was said the full yaqeen. Right? So, so why, why, I won't say that, you know, it does not help. It does help. It helps to the extent that, to the extent of your iman. <laughs> it actually helps to the extent of your iman. Which, uh, Allahu alam lah, eh? <laughs> like, like, what is that? That's why you try to get the water of people who are righteous, you know, and then you try to get them to read into the water and whatsoever. And that was done by Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And then he used to do that. He used to read into water. The Sahaba used to make him read into their food right, because they want his yaqeen, you know, his iman right, to enter into the food. Right, so, Allahu alam. Right, but, but of course, like zamzam, you put zamzam in, it, 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 it removes the ill effects. Right, you put, uh, I mean, basically every day your water, you should read your yasin into your water. Right, your, your daily yasin or your daily fatiha, whatsoever, you should just have the water in front of you and just read it. The the water can and it, and this is not all scientific proven lah, but we know it in the stira lah. The water does absorb positive energy and it absorbs the blessings. Living water. <laughs> can it has to be living water, but actually the fatiha itself makes the water alive, also. Right. Okay. So anyway, I'm going to go through. You know, so basically, this this book that I was going through, this she was saying that she had a patient, and this doctor she had a patient, you know, and this man he was schizophrenic. Right, so he came to her and he said to her, you know, I have, you know, I hear voices in my head. I'm schizophrenic. I, I try. I've been on pills for so long, and I'm sick of it. So, it, uh, so she said to him, you know, go on a water fast. Let me just cut off food altogether, and drink water, and make sure your water that you drink is from a natural source. That means, you know, try to go to a river or to a spring or well. It's just other countries lah, you know, they can do it. We all we all like want to go to a spring well river, what <laughs> the best we have is our reservoir. <laughs> that's, that's the best of, of a natural water source. I mean it is a natural water source like in a sense. But then they process it in whatever then before it comes to our to our taps. <laughs> right. So you know, even then eh <laughs> right, but if you want Baalari Mos has a has a well and whenever you go Bali on Thursday, Saturday, you will see a lot of people who go there, they actually fill up. It's a good idea if you want to just go there and just fill up your, your water every every week is to get the water, the well water from from Mishab Ali. Right, so anyway, he did that. He went on water fast, and uh, and after some time, he came back to her and he said that you know Subhanallah, I went off of all my drugs. I am no longer schizophrenic. I don't hear any of these voices. I you know I I even even I notice my temper has gone down. I, I don't get you know easily agitated or easily. Is he angered anymore? And it all goes back to his food that what he was taking, what he was putting into himself. So all these drugs also affected him. Him taking the drugs was causing more perturbances in his mental health. Right, so all of these things, Mazali says, goes back down to the stomach. It goes back down to the stomach. So even the, the drugs or the, the medication that person is taking is all uh, toxins that the body is trying to fight. Right. Actually, the chapter I just went through last week was so interesting about how the body, like even you know, like uh, autoimmune uh, diseases, you know, like uh, like lepers disease, uh, it does go back down to the the person having taken too much toxins in the body, and the body is unable to process the toxins or put it into fat. Right, uh, the, this this the body begins to put it into cells. So when the body puts it into cells, the body itself will see it as toxins. So the body begins to attack its own self. Uh, that is uh, lepers disease, right? So, so in a sense, you see, it's not something natural. Because why would the body be attacking its own self? Uh, the body is attacking its own self. It's not because the body is, you know, go, gone crazy. Uh, but it's only because the, the, what has happened is that the toxins has gone into the cells. And the body is seeing its own cells to be toxins. Because of, because of, the, of the food that was being taken in or because of the, of the, of the uh, medication... 
that all emerge as toxins. It became toxins in the body. Right, so all of these things, the heart is a lot, a lot to take in, right? But when I was, actually the chapter that I was going through, very interesting. I should take, I should take my, my notes in a while. Because I'm telling you all about it, right? <laughs> so I should take my notes in a while. Right, but very interesting of what they say about food. So Maghazali begins by saying, this is, this is basically the house of diseases. And in all four aspects. So when someone does not care about their food and their intake, it will affect their spiritual self and their emotional self. Right? Imam Ghazali says in, in, some other, in another one of his books, he says it will make them into pigs and dogs in, the, in, the, in character-wise. They are pigs and dogs character-wise. Right? So, so they begin to, 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 to behave like, like this kind of uh, greedy and selfish and uh, lustful animals. Right? Masayna Muhammad. Right? So it, uh, Masayna Muhammad. So, so, so he says, so it affects your emotional self, affects your mental self. Right, by what, 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 and we see this man with his schizophrenia, him staying off of food cured his schizophrenia. He cured it. Right, so sometimes you don't know. And someone was saying to me, you know, like, like when it comes to all these emotional diseases, you know, like depression and, and being suicidal and whatsoever, right, and they say people who, when they, take, when they take the hormones, they actually get better. When they take this medication, they get better. The answer is that, you know, why is the body not producing these hormones in the first place, or why is the body overproducing in the first place? Uh, there is some imbalance happening in the body that is causing it to, pro- to, 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 to overproduce or to lack in production. Something's happening. And that is resulting in that person going into depression. So by pumping in pills into this person, you are just you know, covering the surface of the problem. But there's a deeper problem that's happening with this person's uh, food or emotional state that's causing all these things. So if you can go down to that part, then the body will begin to regulate and begin to produce things as how it's supposed to produce things. And that is how like, the Chinese, you say the Chinese have the yin and the yang, because they will go into balance, right? into like something is not right if you're balanced. So when you come to diseases, the Chinese will go into the full body. Right? The, body the Chinese, will, they, they, will, they will study the entire body of the human being and to see where is the imbalance, right? what's going on. Right? When they, when they, and so they won't like, just target, so you say, I have a rash here. So they won't say, oh, rash, put cream. No, they will say, okay, what's causing the rash? Right, what's causing you know, the asthma? What's causing, you know, why is she having asthma? Say genetics. What, why? And sometimes you see, people just you know, brush off and say genetics. No, it's actually toxins. Something is going on in the body right, that has messed up the system that Allah subhanahu wa has made so perfect right, in the body. And not to deny that there are diseases that Allah subhanahu wa has created, right, or viruses and bacteria, and that is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and there's a test on his creation. And that's all. Right, a test on his creation. Right, so... Things that you see, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. That's right. Yeah, what is there? <laughs> All right, so I mean, subhanallah. <laughs> All right, so subhanallah. Uh, uh, it is, I mean, it's eye opening. And that's why Imam Ghazali and the ulama, they all know. They all know that food is one of the greatest causes of sins and crime. Food. Right. Crime also, right? Crime and a sins are crime. Because character, right? Yeah, character. character. I mean, last someone is lustful, you know. Someone is greedy. Someone is, you know. Also, these are all these are all diseases in character, right? So they are all they all are classified under spiritual diseases. That's why fasting, la'allakum tattaqun. Right? You fast so that you begin to be aware of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Fasting controls all appetites, not just food, right? But Every you know desire of a person fasting will control helps a lot. Right? Even even as when you're sleeping, when you fast, the more you fast, the less you sleep. It's true. <laughs> right? It's really it's so when you, you, you do water fasting, you be like you're so, you're so awake. <laughs> because food does a lot to a person's uh, uh, because when you eat something, it goes into your stomach. The stomach in, in Arabic they will say it's not the stomach uh, uh, gives out a vapor. They will go up to the head and make someone sleep. That's what food does. <laughs> and that is why uh, it is best not to eat after Isha so that you can wake up in the morning for the hajj. You just try. You, you, you just stop dinner. Just stop your dinner. You will lose a lot of weight. Right? But then uh, you will also wake up with the hajj very easily. Right? You just stop, stop your dinner. <laughs> but when the moment you start eating dinner, you get very lethargic. <laughs> you can eat dinner only, that's it. You're just so weak. And sleepy, and you know, like can't even get out. When you do it, you do like one akat, two akat. You know, you can't do it. So he says here, 
سو از 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 جريتست اعظمها ضررا واسما Right, the greatest of harms and sins. لأنه منبع والمعدن. Right, because it is a it is a منبع منبع it is a source like a well, and a a معدن right it is a mine. Right, because from from the from the stomach comes a lot of things, and from it, right, it comes from it all of the other uh, limbs will gain its strength. So from the stomach comes strength and comes weakness. Right? From the stomach comes chastity and it comes uh, being pervert, right? perverse right? in a sense. Right? So jimahin uh, and, and the likes of it. Jimahin yeah. means being perverted come from the stomach also. Being chased come from the stomach also. So it's not a coincidence that you know, Sayyidina Fatima Zahra, she used to eat very little and she was the most chaste of women. Right, so it's not a coincidence in our time with all of these, you know, terrible foods out there that people are becoming less and less. They're becoming more and more promiscuous. Is the word promiscuous? Right, uh, Jima, and they're becoming more and more promiscuous. It's all it's all down to the food, to the drugs, to the medication, to the injections, to the all of these things. It all comes down to that. Right. So here, right, so then he says, "Faalaika isan." بصيانته عن الحرام وشبهته أولا ثم عن فضول الحلال ثانيا إن كانت لك كمة في عبادة الله تعالى so clear this part so he says therefore it is on you to guard over or to protect the stomach first and foremost from the halal and the shubha That's under number one. So the first level of guarding your stomach is from the halal and the doubtful. Stay far away. Secondly, from excessiveness in the halal. It's from guard yourself from the haram and the doubtful. Secondly, from the excessiveness of the halal. So eat just what you need of the halal, right? And thirdly, uh, so there's secondly, yeah. If 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 you are concerned about your worship to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, you see that. So he's not even talking about this about your physical health. No, he's talking about this about your worship. That's all. It's all about worship, worship of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and that's why the book that I was going through, you know, uh, the, the, the the doctor that wrote that book, while on the outward it might seem like a book on physical health, right? Uh, her editor told us. Right, that actually she wrote that book to guide people to the path of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. It was actually more of a spiritual book, right? It was a minhaj, right? yeah. But it was all based on the stomach, right? or on the body and the physical body. So what it might seem very technical, very scientific, very uh, you know uh, medical in a sense, right? Uh, is actually a spiritual book. It's actually tasawwuf that she's talking about in there, and it's not so much uh, nutrition. It sounds a lot like nutrition in the book, but actually it's about tasawuf, right? Because no, it's not. <laughs> it's, in, it's in Turkish. It's not in English. Mm-hmm. So it's someone reads it with uh, with us, lah. So it uh, so basically so basically it's, a, it's someone. So that's why uh, because the thing what is that for the human being, the most Im- or for the believer, the most important concern that we have in our life is our akhirah. So you know, like someone says, you know, you I heard of this kind, I heard this kind of uh, statements. You know, you diet, exercise, diet, exercise. You know, you die anyway. You know, like you know, you die anyway. Like so, why do you care to be fit? Why do you care what you eat? Why do you care? Or if someone says, oh, I'm very thin. You know, I'm I'm naturally thin, so I can eat whatever I want to eat. That's not matter to me. You know, I'll eat as much as I want of chocolate and ice cream and whatsoever. It doesn't matter to me because I'm very thin and I'm naturally thin, right? So and they say that you know, you know what is important is your ibadah. What's important is your heart. What's important is your is your worship. Yes, the most important thing to a human being is their worship and their relation to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is the most important thing. But your food affects that directly, right? Directly it affects that. Right? So if someone understands this, no matter how slim they are, or how thin they are, or whatsoever, right? Their their drive to eating clean, right, is because Imam Ghazali says, if you care about your akhirah, right? if you care about your akhirah, care about your food. Right, so it's not really a drive towards you know losing weight or looking nice, looking good or whatever. No, right. The 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 whole point of eating clean is so that you if if your concern is your worship, so you worship better. 
you find it easier to wake up and worship, easier to get up and worship. I for a person. I for ill pila. Anyway, sorry, then wrong. Alright, so you know, he says here. Say a moment. So he says here. I for amal haram wa shubhatu. For inama yelzimukal bahasu. Anuhuma lisalasati umur. Alright, so then he says here. Right, as for the haram and the shubuhat, right, for surely right, you are you need to go and you need to push yourself on three things. Right? So three things. They will push you to guarding yourself over unlawful and uh, doubtful food. The first of which is that you are being you're being wary of the fire of hell, right? Jahannam. That means you're being warned of the fire of hell. I call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, In a'udhu billahi minash shaytani rajim. Inna al-lazina ya'kuluna amwala al-yatama zulman innama ya'kuluna fi butunihim nara wa sayasullawna sa'ira. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, For surely the one who eats into his stomach that means eat into his into, into himself lah. Right, the wealth of the orphan. Right, so here I'll even say the uh, haram uh, flesh. Uh, you're eating the wealth of the orphan, not a physical eating lah. Right. Right, of course, consuming. You're consuming. Right, you're consuming that wealth of the orphan. Meaning, taking it, it's not it's not yours. You're taking it. Right. So the one who consumes the wealth of the orphan, uh, wrongfully, for surely he is eating into his stomach fire. <laughs> And he will roast uh, in the depths of the fire. So this ayat, it covers any wealth that is not halal. Uh, any wealth that is haram. And in our time, you know, when people be warned, in our time, people can take wealth and it's not theirs. Right? Someone, like last week, I had one of my uh, classes, one of the people that was saying to me that, you know, uh, while she, she had a husband, had kids from him, and he she he divorced her right, after a while. That he died eventually. A Muslim in Singapore, right? Uh, but but the family of the husband took all the wealth and did not give his sons any. He had sons with her, right? So she she had three sons, right? So so all of the wealth is to be distributed to the sons. The sons deserve the wealth. Right? While she is divorced, she has no more inheritance from him. But the sons do, right? But, the, but because it was an ugly divorce. Right, the family just consumed all of his CPF, all of his wealth, everything. Not a cent to give to give to their own nephews. It's their own nephews, you know, like his siblings. It's their own nephews, the brother's uh, son. Right, but nothing, not a cent given to the sons. Right, so then she was saying to me, "How like this?" Then I said to her, "You know, because they went, they wanted to act on the Singapore law, I know on Sharia law. They took all the CPF to themselves. Right, then they have to answer the day of judgment, halas." Right, they have consumed about you know a hundred thousand worth of halal of haram wealth. It's haram into their stomachs, and it will be it will be it will be fire on them until the day of judgment. Fire on them if they don't give the money back. Right, so on the day of judgment, you know her sons will come you know will come up and claim from their own uncles and aunties who took you know who just consumed all of the wealth of their their father inheritance. Right, and in that case, in a sense, it's also the wealth of the orphan. You know, because some of the sons were very young when the father passed away, do eleven or something. Often, right? often is basically a lost father before the age of puberty, right? They are often. So that that means that they, their own uncles and aunties consume the wealth of the orphan without realizing. They didn't notice the severity of what they did, right? But then, of course, I mean, as Muslims, you should know, you know, and because and because they have been asking also, but they ignore all the requests, right? So all this is, is basically is fire into the stomach. Right, and sometimes, you know, it, uh, when it comes to court, you know, it, uh, it, uh, court cases and everything, sometimes money is given to different parties, right? And it's given on on wrong, you know, uh, wrong. Basically, basically, the court case was 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 wrongly judged because the lawyer was more eloquent, or the or or they lied to their teeth, and they lie about certain things, right? and because of their lies and their and their deceit, right, they win the case. And by that they would they win money, and by that all of that every cent haram. So they, they, they even if they win like fifty k, you know, thirty k, whatsoever, right? Every cent haram. 
And you want to live your life consuming $30,000 and it's all haram. And if you buy a house with that money, the house haram. You buy clothing, the clothing haram. I the food haram. I everything haram. The person is cut off right, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and from the du'as being answered because haram, haram, haram. How will the du'a be answered by, 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 by a hadith from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Right, so this Allah says, Allah is warning very, very strongly here right, that those who eat the wealth of the orphan, they are eating fire. Understand, you take this, this, this dollars that you're taking, you're taking coal from the hellfire and you're putting it into your mouth, right, consuming it. And Rasulullah says, Qala Nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Kullu lahmin nubita min, Kullu lahmin nabata min suhtin fannaru awla bihi. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, every bit of flesh that is grown from a sin, right, from, 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 from sin, from a forbidden source, the fire is most deserving of it. And the fire has most right to it. Every bit of flesh that is grown from what is forbidden. This is how hadith makes your, you know, just basically puts things in perspective. When it comes to eating haram, uh, uh, meat itself, and eating from haram wealth gotten from wrongful means so if people have taqwa they just have taqwa all these things should fear should, 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 should frighten you because you don't want to spend your whole life trying to cleanse your you know your your your, your health your wealth and your property and your flesh or whatever you consume of other people's wealth right? if someone is very careful you know even when there is when there is a dispute between people you will on the pasal of wara, you will say, take it. I, you know, take it, I halal it for you. Take it. You know, I don't want it to be a, a, a court case or an argument or whatsoever. And then, you know what? You know, some of the wealth that is not supposed to be mine comes to me. Right? So, you know what? Someone who is, has, has wara and someone who has full trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, take it. Allah will give me what is better. Right? Allah will give you wealth. He will. Right? He's the one who gives wealth. Right, so you don't have to worry if I if I just you know if I forfeited because you don't want to go to court, you don't want to fight, you don't want to you don't want to you know get involved with these dirty things. You just you know what? I'll just take a step back. You take what you want, dala, and then carry my way. So the second one is that wasani you an akil al harami wa shubhati matroodun la yuwafqu nila ibada. إذ لا يص لا يصلح لخدمة الله تعالى إلا كل طاهر مطهر. And here he says this is even more scary. This is even more scary. Every person who eats haram or shubhat, and shubhat in our time almost is almost everything eh, has shubhat in it. A lot of things and it's not not clearly halal. I <laughs> or basically they're not or if not shubhat they are they are not طيب. They're not good for you. A lot of things are not good for you. It's harmful, right? So, but this shubhat meaning shubhat in, in the sense whereby it's really not clearly halal, right? So, chocolates that are really not clearly halal, right? That, that people might, might might just consume, and they read the ingredients and they see some numbers there, and they're like, eh, whatever, <laughs> and they eat it, right? or even meats that they don't know exactly the halal of the halal of the meat they eat it, right? Or even wealth, right? Wealth that is money that is gotten. And you know that it is not uh, clear if this money is halal or not for you. And you consume it. Uh, uh, Imam Ghazali says that this person, he is abandoned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that Allah will not inspire in him to, to, to worship him. He will not have any tawfiq. This person is matrud. And matrud meaning he is abandoned. He's thrown away or distant from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he will not find in himself the ability to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or to worship him. He will, he will not find a tawfiq to do so. And, and because and he says, because the only one who can serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or be enslaved to Allah is the one who is pure and is purifying himself. Only that person can, will be called to the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to worship him. That is the second one. Eh? So the first one is about the hellfire. Second one is about you will not have tawfiq. Uh, if you consume what is haram or shubaha. Qul tu ana, I say, Alaysa Allah ta'ala qad mana'al junuba minad dukhuli ila baytihi. 
wal muhaditha an masi kitabihi qala azza min qail qala azza man qa min qailin wala junuban illa abiri sabirin hatta taghtasilu wa qala ta'ala la yamassuhu illa al mutahharun ma anna al janabata wal hadatha amr mubah fa kayfa biman huwa munghamis في في قذر الحرام ونجاسة السحت والشبهة متى يدعى إلى خدمة الله العز وجل خدمة الله العزيز وذكره الشريف سبحانه كلا فلا يكون ذلك أبدا. so Imam Ghazali he makes a point and he says you know and I say You know, even you know, even Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, He has forbidden the person in junub and the person in the hadath, right? Major, major self impurity, or junub uh, after uh, after sexual intercourse, from entering his house. Like Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has made it haram on the person on on major major impurity of menses or nifas right? and on junub to enter his house, meaning the the the, the mosque, the masjids, and then he quotes the ayat. Where Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala says, and not someone on junub, except if he is going going through, uh, until he is able to take his full bath, and the one on menses should not touch the Quran until she is pure. So, and knowing that junub, being in junub and being on hadas is something that is permissible, is something that is natural to go into these states. So he says, what more for someone who has completely drowned himself, and gulf himself. In the filth of haram, by choice. What more about this person? He has the nudges of of what is forbidden and sh- and, and 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 doubtful. How 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 ever how will this person ever enter into the worship and service of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and into His noble zikr or remembrance Subhanahu Wa Taala? Never, he will never enter into worship of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. It's how 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 strong his words are. He's like you know can't even you know Subhanallah. Something natural like junub and hadas, major hadas you can enter the mosque. What about something that you choose yourself to do? The filth of sin, or the filth of of wealth, or the filth of 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 haram. If it's all over you, you cannot go anywhere near Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Right. That's why the first chapter we have is Taubat. In second chapter, it's Taubat, because you need to cleanse yourself of these things if you want to get close to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. That is why for someone who is deep on sin, the moment they Taubat, Allah pulls them near. Because, because it's as if you know Allah has been wanting to pull them near for the longest time, right? But their sins stopping them. So when they make a full taubat nasuha, a sincere taubat, they become so close to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. They soar so high to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala because there's this this block that's stopping. So once the the block like a dam, like once the block is removed, the gush happens, right? And they get close to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So Maghazali says this about haram food and haram uh, wealth. وقال يحيى بن معاس الرازي رضي الله تعالى رحمه الله تعالى الطاعة مخزونة في خزائن الله ومفتاحها الدعاء وأسنانه الحلال فإذا لم يكن للمفتاح أسنان فلا ينفتح الباب وإذا لم ينفتح باب الخزانة كيف يوصل إلى ما فيها من الطاعة؟ so Yahya bin Muasi, yeah, he says that word that 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 uh, so Yahya bin Muasi says that obedience to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala it is stored in the treasures of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. It means in, his, in his, like, 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 like a chest of treasure, right? The key to this, the key to this treasure, you know, of word of of, of obedience. It is du'a. Du'a is the key to this treasure of obedience. The thief of the key, and right? that means the the thief of the key here lah. Right? And what's it called? The the thief. There's a word for it. There's a word for it. There's a word for it. The. Um, 
But there's a word for it. It's not called thief. It's called something else. In Arabic, it's called thief. Right? In 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 uh, in English, there's a word for it. The what is G? No, 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 no. Is it G? G or B? <laughs> the uh, sorry, I can't find. I can. Okay, never mind. Never mind. Thief. It's not thief. It's not thief. There is a word for it. Yeah, yeah. There's a word for it, but never mind. It's okay. So anyway, the thief of the of this key right, is the halal. So the thief. Uh, notches, ridges, ridges. I want the ridges. Ridges. It's an R. I R, right? Ridges. It's called the ridges of the of the key. Ridges. Uh, the teeth is teeth is more like a. It's like a layman term. <laughs> uh, ridges is more of the proper term of a teeth. Okay. Anyway, uh, so the the key to this chest of obedience, this treasure chest of obedience, is du'a, and its ridges is the halal. Right, and he says that, and if a person, if a key has no ridges, then what use is this key? It can't open the door. It can't open anything. And if it can't open the door of, of this treasure of obedience, then how can a person reach obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So you first need the halal to, to make your key, and you make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you ability, and then you can open up the door of of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala That is number two eh? As-thalisu, The third one Anna akil al-harami wa shubhati Maharumun min fi'al al-khayri Wa in ittafaqa laku fi'al khayrin Fahuwa mardudun alayhi Ghayru maqbulin minhu Fa'idhan لا يكون له من ذلك إلا عناء والكد والشغل والشغل الوقت قال صلى الله عليه وسلم كم من قائم ليس له من قيامه إلا شاء إلا سهر وكم من صائم ليس له من صيامه إلا جوع والظم والظماء. so he says here the third the third thing because he says three things that should push you to stay away from haram and shubha. The first is the fire, the fire of hell. Second is uh, you will not be given the tawfiq to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Third, he says, right, that you will not be able to do any form of goodness. Right? In the eating haram and shubha will forbid you from doing goodness itself. So you're not, you won't even be a good person. Right? But you be, should be a bad person because of the shubha and the haram that you eat. And he says, and, if a per- and even if a person is able to do acts of goodness, then his acts of goodness are rejected onto his face and he will not be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, because, uh, 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 because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only accepts what is pure. And right, so it's rejected unto him. He will therefore get nothing from it except trouble and toil. Right? He doesn't get anything except for difficulty and toil. And, uh, and, and spending his time on it because he gets no reward in doing it. As how Rasulullah has said in a hadith, how many of those who stand in the night to pray, they didn't get anything from their standing except tiredness and or wakefulness. And how many has fasted and didn't get anything from their fast except hunger and thirst? Nothing from their fast. And because of what they are engaged in of the haram. وعن ابن عباس رضي الله تعالى عنه عنهما قال لا يقبل الله صلاة صلاة امرئ وفي جوفه حرام فهذا فهذه هذه and so ibn abbas narrated or he said that Allah does not accept the prayer of a person whose whose insides are filled with haram he does not get any, any. He does not. He does not get his prayers accepted by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala at all, because if you fill the haram, if you fresh from the haram, your du'as and your prayers are not accepted by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Wa amal fudul al halal. Okay, so that's that's the end of that that part. Eh? So that's the first part about what is shubha and what is haram. And thereafter, he goes into what is excessive of what is permissible, and this we have. We have, uh, Masayna Muhammad, 
right? We have how many? Oh, a lot. We have a lot of things that will push someone away from doing it. More than ten. There's more than ten. Right. Uh, of what will stop someone from it, taking the halal. And there's more than ten because you see, for a haram, it's easy. Hellfire, you won't have tawfiq, and you won't do goodness. You know, you do, you do the haram. That is enough to stop a person from eating the haram and the shubahat. Halal, most people will tell themselves, is permissible. What? Why should I stop myself from, from, from gorging myself with food? You know, indulging. You know, once in a while, I want to eat a lot, a lot, a lot. Right? So you, you just gorge yourself up. Right, so that's why the the what will stop someone from doing this uh, has to be a lot of reasons, <laughs> because the person will give a lot of excuses as to why he is able to eat a lot from the ha- from the haram. But inshallah, I don't think I want to go into it because it's a lot. The next lesson will be better for us to go into it. Any questions or any discussion? You have to open up, or you want to take my my notes? <laughs> Can I practical tips? Practical tips. Of uh, consumption because he will come and he will speak about it also later on. Right, but basically, in our time, a lot of things because like, I have been going through this this book. It speaks about a lot of different chemicals in our foods, and with every chemical, she because she's a doctor, medical doctor. She, it's a, it's a, it's a it's a Turkish book. It's not translated to English, nor do I know Turkish. <laughs> uh, but someone, the one who I'm learning it with. Uh, is teaching it and she knows Turkish. Yeah. Knows Turkish. Yeah. So so the book is only in Turkish. Huh? You didn't get the book. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, my husband's inside. <laughs> right, but anyway, I, from what I remember, lah, another time I'll bring the people with me. The Basically, basically, they go into the, the chemicals that are produced in our time. Different chemicals in our time. They are, they are very much uh, widespread in food. And they speak about each of them and the negative effects that these chemicals have on you physically and emotionally, spiritually and mentally. Right? So that for example, things like aspartam. Right? Something that is in our time. Yeah, aspartam is something and it's now they put it everywhere also. Now it's not it's, now it's not just in sugarless things, no. Even in sugared things, they will use aspartam. Right? So aspartam is something that is uh Widely used now, right? It's, it's a it's an ingredient. It's one of those. Yeah, it's because of Parkinson. A S P R T M E. Aspartam is in almost everything now. They did it's everywhere, <coughs> and it's yeah. And she was able to it's a sweet, it's a sweet, it's a sweetener, right? but it's terrible, terrible. But now they don't use it as sweetener. They put it in everything already. Right, so it, uh, and then also this uh, canola oil. She also mentioned about canola oil, about what it does to a person's body. Right, that is canola oil. Basically, is is an oil. Right, that is uh, you know, or, or reused oil. And now a lot of a lot of this uh, set, uh, hawker centers or food courts, they use reused oil. And reused oil is one of the most worst things for you to actually consume. Reused oil. You should always use fresh oil. Right, so if you are cooking, if you are frying, the all that you hold, that you keep, don't keep it. And like, hey, I use one whole, one whole, one whole you know, bottle of oil to fry my stuff. And you're like, no, go and move to air frying. <laughs> right, air frying also, Allah Allah made the, the consequences. Right, but inshallah, it's better. <laughs> right, but, I mean, a lot of it's are new stuff. Right, but air frying, I mean, inshallah, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's oven. It's oven, yeah, it's, it's oven. So go to oven, go to baking, go to air frying, grilling. Right, uh, because of the oils that we have nowadays. Right, while oil can be healthy, like coconut oil, uh, olive oil, you know, and these are all healthy forms of oil. Right, but these are more expensive. Right, and if you want to fry, you always feel like you know you want to keep the oil because you use a lot of oil for frying. Right, so you want to keep the oil thereafter. It's like, like eating all this fast food. They keep the oil there the entire day, and it's fried. They fry it's in it over and over and over again. They fry whatever they fry in it. Over and over again, and all of these things. She, she has a full list of what, how it affects a person's emotional, physical, mental, and uh, uh, and and uh, spiritual health. All these things go into people. That's why you know if you just cut down on fast food, you will see a lot of changes in your behavior. A lot of changes. You cut down on junk food. You see your 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 spiritual self will will change a lot. 
and just by junk food, uh, you know, uh, elimination, it helps. And that's why in our in our religion, it is recommended to fast twice a week. And when you fast, not for you to 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 gorge yourself after fasting, but to maintain the the minimal food. Uh, basically, the best answer to all of these food questions is eat less. And that's what Stop himself said. You know, eat enough to have your backbone straightened up. Right? Eat less. Right? But the thing is that, is that you know, it's about a direct head-on fight with our nafs. Right? The food nafs is one of the most strongest in the world. The strongest nafs. And, and our time whereby the types of food, the variety of food, and the availability of food, how easy it is that it's available now. It just you know, feeds the nafs. Into all kinds, in all kinds of things, and also that, that and also that she mentions about the the, the uh, she goes from the very beginning of us not chewing well, you don't even chew well, right? and that and because chewing, right, uh, there are basically acupuncture points in the teeth, and so when you chew, right, your teeth begins to have their their points stimulated, and it begins to uh, to inform the body. Uh, what exactly is being consumed so the body will be producing the right proteins for what is being consumed. Right? So when you chew well, it goes into you and this and the proteins in the stomach is able to what is produced is is ready to receive the food. Right. If you don't chew well, the the, the body has it's not it's not able to actually process what you are eating. That is why if you do your niyat of fasting, right? And then you go into fasting the day, you actually find it easier than if you didn't actually intend to fast and you try to stay away from food. Right? Because when you intend to fast, your body is really being programmed that for today I am not going to eat. So the body will not produce uh, uh, acids and it will not produce uh, enzymes. Because the body is, is, is mentally programmed. See how the mental and the physical are attached. Right? As I said, niyat is, is, is sunnah. It's also made it sunnah for, for sunnah for sunnah fastings and for wajib fastings it is uh, it, it is it is wajib right? and also you know like for sunnah fastings like the, your niyat must happen before zuhur for for sunnah fastings and one day I was wondering because I was I didn't eat until almost after zuhur and I was thinking to myself yeah should we just fast today I'm not the niyat and I was thinking to myself why is it that I can't niyat you know I was always wondering like you know like I didn't eat the entire time until almost asar right so why can't I just niyat now. I didn't eat the entire time. But the hukum is no. You must niyat before zuhur. You must. If you want to do, if you want to do uh, sunnah. for sunnah fasting, yes. No, you don't have to niyat in the night. You, you can niyat. You cannot. I thought you must, after subo must already. At least no, for before subo you must niyat. For, far, for, for fardu. For, for sunnah you can niyat anytime before zuhur. Is there, there, are, there are instances whereby he will wake up in the morning. Right, and then he will go to the magic come back. And three past subo. And you ask his wife, what do we have for today? And she says, nothing. Then he'll say, oh, then for, therefore, therefore I am fasting. And that is where the ulama get the ruling of if for sunnah, for sunnah fasting, you can niyat any time before zuhur. As long as it's not zuhur. I just was wondering that how come, you know, if, let's say I, I remain not eating until asar, like, can I niyat at this point? It's a few more hours and I get, I get maghrib. No, you must have niyat from zuhur itself. Like, and then you are counted to be fasting. Otherwise, you just don't eat it for that day, lah, basically. Uh, but basically, it is the, the, the programming of the body. So she actually begins all the way from chewing. And then she goes into the mixing of food. How that harms the body. And then she goes into the, the order in which we eat food. How that also harms the body. And all of this is in the sunnah. It's all there. It's not, she's, not, she's not telling us anything new. She's just putting science to it. That's all. She's putting nutrition and medicine and, and, and medicine to it. But it's all in the sunnah. All. Rasulullah never mixed two types of food. Rasulullah, you know, when he would never uh, eat and drink at the same time. Rasulullah, he would always eat fruits first. Uh, he would never eat fruits later on. Rasulullah, when it comes to meat, he just only eat meat. And that's it. Nothing mixed with the meat. Uh, so in a sense, they, yeah, they, so even with rice, or, it's all in our own, it's our own culture that we do this right. so yeah the meat is there so if there's bread you eat the bread first yeah, yeah eat the breakfast and then the meat yeah fish not mix chicken. yeah fish and chicken and all. yeah that one is very like all of our walimas like our walimas all you know so you go to a walima it's only to just pick 
what do you want to eat? Chicken, meat or fish? Not and. <laughs> like, is this or this or this? <laughs> and you don't like, you know, this and this and this. Yes, definitely. The one who if we prepare also definitely affects uh, the spirituality that's in the food. Like my grandmother, he won't let like Chinese people prepare his food. Like he will ask us where we yeah. buy the food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My grandmother same thing also. Yeah. She was say, where do you buy it from? And you tell them from from a uh, from a uh, wherever you bought it from, right? Even though there's a halal sign, yeah. then she'll be like macro. Uh, it's true. It's true. Right, macro. Uh, so, oh, they didn't cook it. Ah, they didn't cook it. So that's okay. Ah, that's okay because they put it. Mm, mm. And it's cool because, because uh, in a sense, the people who cooked it, they don't say Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. They don't zikir. They don't slawat. They, uh, for all you know, they don't wash their hands well. They don't istinja. They don't, you know, like it's all these things, right? That goes into the food. That that makes it uh, makro lah in a way. Like, it's makro. Uh, so that for her, but there are of course there's a line there also. If you are served at a non-Muslim's house, food, and they went out of their way to ensure that it's halal, of course you eat. Then it's more virtuous that you honor them, right? Then you like, eh, no, makro, makro. <laughs> but it's more of it's more of on the side of if you bought food, uh, you bought food, uh, you know, and then you brought it home. And then there is, of course, any bought food also, I would say makro. I won't even stop at. You know, uh, non-Muslim food. I was I was say even the Muslims nowadays, their food. Sometimes you go to their shops, like they don't even go for prayers. They're smoking, they're cursing, they're whatsoever. Allah, Masayna Muhammad, and <laughs> and 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 it's just best that you just cook your own food, right? or eat eat uh, food from the house. It's best to always have home cooked food. It's best. Right, so inshallah, we we'll stop there for today, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. I'm actually having an effect of the water fasting because when I water fast, my vision comes blur, so I can't read. So I was like, I was moving back and forth because I'm seeing, uh, I'm seeing spots in the in the book, so I can't, I can't wherever I look, I can't see the words. <laughs> so I'm stopping here. Right, but it's it's a it's an effect of water fasting. When you water fast, I'm water fasting right now. Right, so when you water fast, uh, you get side effects. Because when you water fast, one thing your body begins to eat up your flesh. So when your body eats up your flesh, uh, you, of course you get thinner, right? And when you get thinner, the toxins that are, that that were stored in your fats, the body now begins to metabolize to metabolize the the, the, the toxins. Sometimes, like for me, I have a lot of toxins. So the body is unable to metabolize the toxins. The body begins to do stuff to try and handle the toxins. So for me, when I water fast, so what water fasting is not for everybody. You must be really mentally prepared. The water fast. That means I only drink water. That means I only drink water. I don't consume anything else. Is it water? And it's it's doable. You can do it for like ten days straight without consuming anything. It's very much doable. Right, so for me, like when 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 the the, the the flesh goes away, the toxins come out, and it's how I can see the toxins coming out. Right, uh, they will come out for me as as rashes all over my legs. It will come out, and it will come out especially at night because that's when your liver works. So you throw it out, then the liver will, will, will be metabolizing this this this, this uh, toxins. Then by morning they go away. Uh, so just by the night is gata lah. Night time gata 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 gata. And sometimes I'm not sure about the, the the vision thing. Why why is my vision affected? But I know it happens in the water fast. I cannot I cannot read too long because then my eyes my eyes get very uh I, I see spots. I'm seeing spots right now. I can't see your face. I'm actually seeing spots everywhere. Ah, <laughs> huh? yeah, I know it's you. I, but I, I can't actually see right now. But it goes away. Because the body is handling something that's, that's in my brain. Because a lot of toxins are, st- are stored in the head. That's why you have a lot of issues. So a lot of mental issues that come from, from, from food. Because a lot of toxins the body eventually puts into the brain. Because there are parts of the brain that is that it's not used. So the body puts these toxins there. Right? It's, especially if you don't put it into your flesh. Right? So it's not where things happen. Lah. You know, they, have, they actually have like brain detox. You can detox your brain. They have liver detox. You, know, you, can, you can cleanse the liver. Liver cleansing, you have kidney cleansing, you have uh, brain cleansing. Right? So because this is our where the toxins mainly are, they are, they are, they are stored. Right? So, yeah, so I'm stopping. I'm saying this, I'm stopping here because <laughs> I can't actually. Water fasting. So, water fasting, depending on, on your experience in fasting itself, 
are you a good faster? <laughs> like if you're someone who who is who regularly fast Monday Thursdays, or you regularly fast three days a week, and that kind of thing. So and and you find fasting okay. You, you're not you're not struggling with just fasting itself, right? So then to do water fasting, I would recommend to do one day first, see how your body uh, handles it, right? And then always whenever you break your water fast, to just break on fruits, because the body is trying to cleanse. The last thing you want to do is to pump it with uh, toxins when it's trying to cleanse. So when you go into water fasting, straight away the body begins to go into a into a cleansing mood. Because the body recognizes that it doesn't have to handle any more food intake. That's so what the fasting does. What the fasting gives your body a break right, from having to digest and assimilate food. So the body recognizes because it, it, it begins from your, from your niyat, from your mind. You must niyat, very strong niyats before you go into fasting. And right? then the body is, is prepared. Then the body knows that, okay, we are being prepared to fast. So the body now abandons the stomach already. Because the stomach has already said, you know what, you already said to yourself, I'm not going to consume. So the body, okay, we are not, 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 not going to consume anymore at this point, right? So, so the body begins to, okay, now my hands are free, in the sense that, like, now I'm free to now finally work on these toxins. Because Allah subhanahu has created the body that it can handle toxins. But it's just that because it's so busy handling new food, new food, new food, it begins to just chuck the toxins by the side and it can't handle that. Right? Because of the new food intake is coming in. So in Islam, you see, mashallah, twice a week, do a cleansing. You know, Monday and Thursdays. Three times a month, do a cleansing. Right? Uh, uh, once a year for a full month, do a cleansing. Because you know, we keep eating, our body is, is just piling up all these toxins. Cannot handle. So the moment you tell your body, I'm going to stop eating, right, the body begins to straight away work on the toxins because it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a chance. So when it begins to work, that is when you will see side effects. Not side effects, but basically you will see the toxins emerging. Because the body is trying to pull out the toxins and metabolize the toxin and, and to throw it out through your liver or your kidney. He keeps on talking, he said, there goes again. Because the thing sticks out. The thing sticks out. So he keeps standing up and he's talking, his head on the top. <laughs> Don't play there, don't play there. That, that place is a <laughs> it's a terrible uh, this this entire console, the TV console is a so many kids dala. <laughs> right, so anyway, so this is what happens uh, to a person. So so you will see side effects. Some people they get they will get like migraine, but it's because they have a lot of toxins in their head. Right, some people like for me I get rashes everywhere. Right, some people they get uh they get spots. But it will all go with a bunga. Well but it will all I got like major bunga on my on my leg, if you can see here. Like, but it's going away. But it's been there for weeks because of the water fasting. Like, two bunga appear out of nowhere, right? Uh, but and I didn't even hear anything. It just appeared, right? Because the body put the toxins there. Huh? For me, I okay. For now, it's only a few days, lah. But I, I start and stop. I, I do like I do like you know three days and I stop. Five days I stop. Ten days I stop. Then kind of thing and I take a break. Then I continue take a break. Continue. Because right? sometimes it's 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 your nafsu, uh, very hard. Right, the environment and people feed you and whatsoever, yeah. So, but but if you can go on a full blown water fasting, right? Uh, so you do begin with one day, you, you test the waters lah, and then you uh, do three days, test the waters a bit more. You do five days, uh, you do ten days. You know, uh, it's up to you. Right, you can read a lot about it online. The the the, the Western world is catching up with it, and it's something. If someone was to argue with you about it. Is something that even Rasul Sam did, while not on purpose, but he did it. I mean, because of poverty, they would go for days on water. Right? So it was something the Sahaba themselves did. Right? But it's not so much on cleansing, but it's more because they are they are poor. Right? So if someone says it's unhealthy, right? it's not unhealthy. It's actually very healthy to give your body a break. Right? But but be prepared for the side effects. Ah. not side effects, but more of like be prepared for the for 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 the for the truth of your body to be shown to you. <laughs> Of how toxic toxic you are inside, that is all being is all being uh, stored in your in your organs and in your fat in your head. Right, so mashallah. Okay, that one is a <laughs> side thing. Okay, we're gonna stop there. So Allah Allah Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala ani wa sahabi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin. Allahumma Allahumma fa'ani ma'alam tana wa zina ma'alam fa'ani wa zina alman ya Rabbil Alamin. الفاتحة أن الله ينزغنا عن المنافع وعمل الخلط مسألة من الله هدى ويصر بقوم النبي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم أرواح معاني من المشيخنا وذوي الحقوق علينا ولا حرب بما مسألة من الفاتحة